And we're live. All right. Well, um, this is uh, one of many. I want to thank you and welcome you to our first ever live stream. Um, and today we're going to be discussing how to get more commercial clients. Well, when this conversation first came up that we were going to be doing live streams, um, it brought back a lot of memories. And I think most recently, it would be being a parent in uh, the audience of uh, uh, one of your child's uh, live plays or events, Christmas events, and just hoping that they didn't do something crazy. So um, I don't know about you, but I'm always, um, you know, excited about seeing what's, un, you know, the unpredictability of live stream um, or live events like uh, plays or um, sirens outside my office or whatever may happen. So but today we're going to be talking about um, commercial cleaning clients um, and um, how to get more or how to get your first. Um, that's a lot to unpack. And so we're going to, you know, jump into that. Uh, but before we do that, um, I do want to remind you that live streams will only be available to uh, membership subscribers uh, moving forward. And it's only five dollars a month. I mean, I can tell you, um, and these are exclusive videos um, that also will be available. Uh, I can tell you from, uh, you know, if you're one of those members, you're getting very valuable information. Um, I will tell you a little bit about myself and about the company and where we've come from. Uh, but we we do offer consulting on the side. And I'm, I can guarantee you folks are paying a lot more than $5 per month to have access to um, myself and others that are on my leadership team. So uh, five dollars is a is a, a definitely a discount. Um, so to anyone that's new here, um, if you don't know who we are, um, you don't know who OctoClean is. A little history about us, um, as well as myself. I'll I wouldn't call it bragging. I'm just going to give you information. So um, OctoClean started from very humble beginnings. Um, we were a commercial cleaning company. Uh, started with one single location. Um, and that location had uh, two restrooms in it, uh, a couple of dining halls and a lobby. And we knew nothing about the cleaning industry whatsoever. Uh, my dad started out in the restaurant business. Uh, we started cleaning really to survive. And uh, from that beginning in the 90s, um, I got really interested in it, um, saw an opportunity to improve and now transform a market that frankly, doesn't get the respect and, um, and, and dignity that it deserves. Um, and so since that time where a decision was, was made that we were going to um, push into this industry and make a difference in it, um, we uh, ran employees for about a decade. And we decided that, um, give or take around 1999, um, that we had to find a way to really make an impact in this industry. Um, and we continually had our employees come to us and say, how do I grow within this organization? Can I have skin in the game? Can I invest in this? Um, and that's where we became um, a franchising system. So we are not a franchisor that bought a system. We developed the system uh, very much like uh, the McDonald's brothers, Ray Kroc actually, and the McDonald's brothers started out back in you know, the 50s, in fact, uh, about 25 miles from here, or actually minutes, uh, about 10 or 15 miles from here, is where the original McDonald's um, was was um, was born. Um, so, you know, there's a rich history of uh, bootstrapping and franchising in this area. Um, so when we began doing it, we we did that not in, in uh, because of Janikin, Coverall, some of the other companies that are out there, we really did it for our employees to help them to build businesses. And so ever since that point, uh, since 2000, until today, our goal is to partner with um, franchisees. Um, and we have a very different model. We're more of a Chick-fil-A model than we are um, a McDonald's or a Janet King coverall model. Um, we're very involved. We like to uh, put ourselves, um, you know, into inject ourselves into the franchisees' day-to-day um, -day operations and work with them to be uh, the best businesses that they can possibly be. And we're unapologetic about that. So, 
Um, along the, the way, of course, we've learned a lot and we've seen just about everything you could imagine. Um, but a big part of that is this topic. It's about um, commercial cleaning clients because if we're going to support our franchisees in the best possible way, the first thing that we have to do is we have to make sure that they can make money on every single account that they clean. So whether we're advising them on accounts that they're actively pursuing themselves, or if my sales team is out going to get accounts for them, um, we have to make sure that we are selling accounts at the highest possible profit margin. Um, and in, in large part, we do that because of our value um, uh, uh, differentiation model. Instead of it being what I see way too often um, is the only differentiation between um, us and them is price. And um, that's not how we sell. That's not how we market. Um, so it's taken a long time to get there. Um, I will tell you when we first started in the 90s, uh, we were the low price leader. And we just didn't know what we didn't know. We learned a lot of lessons along the way um, and found ourselves in a position where we had to fire a lot of customers um, because we just weren't making money, especially after we hired employees. So today should be a, a pretty exciting, um, interesting topic. And um, I'm looking forward to a lot of your questions. I see a lot of comments here. So I'm just going to kind of look down from time to time. Uh, so yeah, we're looking forward to uh, answering some of these uh, and sell it down the road. Okay, well, you know, so we're gonna jump into some of these, I promise we're gonna get to you. Um, so very good. One of the, uh, we wanna kind of jump into the topic, but um, the, the question that I often get is how much can you make cleaning commercial accounts? Well, that's a tough question, right? And it's a tough question because, um, it really comes down to operations and efficiency, right? Too often people get started in the commercial cleaning business and they do it because a friend of theirs had a building and said, hey, do you guys want to clean? Oh yeah, I cleaned homes, I cleaned Airbnb. I did something else, so I'm gonna go clean commercial buildings. And they learn pretty quickly that their profit margins are slim because again, they're pricing things out um, based on what the customer, in that case, their friend told them that they were willing to pay. Um, instead of actually determining what their efficiencies were, what their production rates were, um, and bidding it for what it's worth. So it all starts off with one simple thing. You need to know what your scope of work is for every type of building, which we have access to all of those. You can, you can access those um, through one of our YouTube videos um, on how to bid commercial cleaning services. Once you have that, my first suggestion is, is that you need to take that service schedule and you need to clean buildings um, just that way and learn how to be as efficient as you possibly can. So that's not just how fast you clean, but what equipment are you going to use? What chemical are you going to use? And what training um, or systems are you going to use to clean the facility? Once you have a pretty good grasp on that, and that may be the time where you're like cleaning a friend's building and learning that you underbid it. Uh, when you learn how to be really, really efficient and you can prove your concept, you can prove your pricing, um, then you're gonna know how to price things out. Now I could very simply say, if you're in a commercial cleaning building or a commercial building, you should be making you know, 11 to 16 cents a square foot, right? Okay, that's pretty average. I mean, it, depending on the area you're in, the country you're in, um, you know, that, could, that could vary by three to five cents you know, either way, frankly. Um, what I look at, and I just had a conversation with um, one of our consulting clients um, yesterday, that you know, when it comes to what we do, when it comes to commercial cleaning, um, quoting jobs is all about niche market, right? It's all about having your special space um, within the industry. And the low-hanging fruit, it is perceived, is to go after commercial office buildings and everyone has this goal, this dream to take on some 25 story office building. I, I don't want to crush your dreams if you're one of those folks, but the reality is yes, they're simple to clean. They're probably easy to staff. Actually, I know they're easy to staff, but they're commodity businesses. I mean, these are going to be low price, low price per square foot type of portfolios 
that um, you know, you're doing a lot of work, you're dealing with a lot of labor for very little return. Um, alternatively, what I always suggest is that you become a expert um, at medical cleaning and educational cleaning. By learning how to do those things, you're gonna be able to see the difference between a price per square foot rough range on an office of you know, 11 cents to 16 in a medical facility being anywhere from 25 to as much as 50 cents a square foot. I mean, it's a huge range. Um, and in large part, it depends on operating suites and what you're doing within those, um, those operating suites, et cetera. Um, so you really wanna take into consideration before you start wanting to get more business is what is your core or most ideal client? And it, it should not be whatever somebody calls me on, because if it becomes that, you're going to have a real hard time with differentiating yourself and becoming an expert in a specific area. And if you are an expert, that means you can charge more. Um, so I always encourage people to really narrow their focus on what they're trying to clean. So uh, before we get too far down this road, um, and we I want to talk a little bit about strategies on how to prospect, how to target accounts. Um, I'm going to look at some of these questions, see if I can answer some questions. Uh, so let me take a quick look here, going from the top here. I see, I see you, Vancouver, Canada, Ricky. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, first time here in Georgia. There you go. Hey, uh, is I, I think it's uh, Lewis. Um, excited. Great. Hello. Glad to be here to learn more. Uh, that's uh, Shatora. Um, Adam, I see you over here in Wisconsin. It's got to be cold over there, brother. It's got to be cold. Uh, could someone buy a franchise and sell it down the road? Absolutely. People do that all the time. Um, I see that you answered that. Thank you, um, OctoClean. Uh, I see uh, we have a couple other questions here about uh, I live in town with 22,000 people. Um, okay, so it's a great question. Uh, Crown Aid Cleaning, how to get involved in the community. <clears throat> if you're looking to get involved in the community, um, uh, Crown Aid, I don't have your, your first name. I just know that as your cleaning company. Are you trying to get involved in the community as I see here because you're trying to get more commercial clients? And, if, and, and frankly, you should have, everybody should have something that they do outside of their community. I'm a big believer in that, um, outside of their family and their business to support the community that's raised them. But if you're looking specifically to get involved so that you could get more business, my biggest suggestion um, and bit of advice would be find the client that you want to attract and find out who they support or if they have a nonprofit or if it's a school or if it's something like that and start donating, putting your name up on, on uh, billboards at games, get to know some of the people within the school that are influential. Um, these are extremely effective ways for you to get to the table with the right people. So if you're in a small town and you wanna become a more influential person um, you're going to put money into something. You really need to find first target the types of accounts that you want. Um, it's going to help you significantly in getting that type of business. So, you know, again, sales, um, and actually I haven't said this yet, but sales is a, um, is a very, very precise business. Um, and if you're doing it right, it's not a spray or pray type of mentality where it's like, I'm just going to go out and prospect and see who says yes. It really has to be targeted um, and that you're, you're choosing your targets wisely and you're, you're aiming down that site and you're looking. And this is a great example of that um, Crown Aid Cleaning is you got to find the way to get into the types of accounts that you want. And if you're going to you know, get involved, donate money, do things, you want to do that with a client that you want. So great question. Um, if I was open, so if you were opening your cleaning business today, where would you go first to get leads? We're going to get to that, I promise, um, because not a lot has changed. Um, Taking any questions at the moment, I know any questions off the subject, but I'm stuck on applying for my EIN. Funny thing you mentioned that, um, Lewis, about getting your EIN. Um, why don't we, we'll jump on, uh, let's see if we can get offline on that, because I 
just had to do that for another corporation that I'm setting up. Um, and so, yeah, we have some ideas for you on that. Um, let's see. Was the best way to determine how many hours a facility will take to clean? I just don't trust buying one of these bidding calculations from some of the cleaning companies trying to make a buck. Well, Adam, you're spot on. And I've mentioned this before in videos. There is a, there's a lot of resources out there. One of the, the greatest resources is going to be ISSA. Um, ISSA has cleaning times that you can look at. And your goal is going to be looking at these cleaning times in their, um, in their catalog and trying to meet or beat those cleaning times. Now, I'll tell you from experience, when I first saw these ISSA um, cleaning times, which are, are boring and in a very simple mop floor, how many square feet in an hour, I was like, there's, I can you know, clean that, you know, that square footage three times faster. So I actually had a conversation with an ISSA person at a, um, at a trade show. And what they told me is that we base it on the lowest possible production rate. So if you're looking at, for example, ISSA cleaning times for cleaning a toilet, it's four minutes last time I checked, right? Four minutes to clean a toilet, four minutes to clean a urinal. Everybody who's in this live stream, I guarantee you, you can clean a toilet or a urinal faster than four minutes. But if you're bidding your jobs based on the number of toilets and sinks and urinals, and you're using that as a gauge, then it's pretty easy for you to figure out your production rates because within team cleaning, you're going to find that the person who's cleaning the restrooms is going to get done with their work typically in a building because the way they build buildings, the architects are going to have a certain number of toilets and sinks and urinals to the number of occupants that are in the facility. It doesn't always work this way, but in most cases it does. Um, medical, you got to look at exam rooms and sinks and stuff too. But the, the point is, is that you can create some uh, your own bidding process. And we have our own proprietary um, bidding calculator that we've developed over the years that will soon be an app that we intend on offering. But it's not coming from some tech nerd, you know, in Austin, Texas, that's never cleaned a building. The only thing he's ever cleaned is what his mom told him to clean. Um, it actually is from experts that know how to clean that are going to build this app. So, but what I'll say is, is that, the, you know, I still, even with that proprietary software or, or app that we're developing, I still, for every salesperson who comes through with a, with a bid, I still use my own old school sit down with my old calculator that has a piece of tape on it that I will never get rid of until it breaks, knock on wood, it better never break because it's my lucky charm. I still do it that way. I still go old school and I still bid everything out with how many fixtures, how many toilets, sinks, urinals, how many exam room sinks, et cetera. And then I can create something. Now, we don't have enough time for me to tell you all about that, but I promise you that we'll get there if um, in other live streams. I promise you that. Um, all right. Uh, what's the best way to determine how many hours we talked about? Good, good. Um, is there a product list we reference, like tools and chemicals that you guys recommend? Um, yes, and I thank you, um, Andrea, for doing that um, in the OctoClean thread. All right. So I told you I'd get to what would I do if. I was starting a new territory or starting my business. Well, we're, you're lucky because we're doing that. We just started our new territory in Maricopa County, Phoenix, um, Arizona. Um, and when it came time to how are we going to get clients, we, we went right into what we know works. Um, and so what works is, number one, I'm going to sit down and look at what geographic area am I going to want to service business? And servicing business, it's important that you identify not only the area where the business is, but where is the labor going to be. So if I'm in Phoenix, which not everybody knows about Phoenix, but you have similar things in all the cities that you live in, you have a business hub in Phoenix. It can be Scottsdale. Um, it can be Phoenix Central. It tends to be a little bit more educational. Um, but you're not, you know, not going to find labor in Scottsdale. Very, very unlikely you're going to find labor there. So you're gonna find labor somewhere in you know the south a little bit more, um, you know Mesa, Tempe, uh, West Valley, those kind of areas. So the sweet spot between 
business and labor is somewhere in between those two areas. And so I, I always look at, you know, you need to do to identify where is the labor and where is the overlap of business. And that's where you should start. The next thing, as I mentioned, is I would go in and say, OK, well, I need to get I want medical accounts because fewer people are going after that. So consider the Walmart philosophy, right? What, what Walmart did is they didn't go into major cities and open Walmarts. They went into small towns. Unfortunately, they destroyed a lot of small business in the process, but they went where no one else was. So for you, it's the same philosophy. You're going into um, surgery centers, medical clinics, things like that, that only highly specialized cleaning companies are going into, or educational facilities where only highly specialized, usually, you know, folks who've been in the industry a long time would go into. So for some of you, you might look at that and like, well, I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable with that. There's nothing you can't learn and there's nothing you can't apply. The difference between what it was in the 90s when we started and what it is today is that all the information is out there. The thing that people are not good at is execution and consistency. So if you want to learn how to clean medical facilities and clean schools, you can. There's no reason why you can't. We offer a lot of that information on our YouTube channel and we'll continue to offer that information within these live streams. So target your accounts within that sweet spot between labor and business. The next thing is, is that you're going to go, I mean, there is no easy way to sell, right? So we're going we're gonna to do three different things. Target, that's identifying the opportunities. Next is prospect, right? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to you know, try, to, try to pack this in here a little bit. So prospecting is number one. I've identified targets, I have a business card, I have my polo, I have a notepad, and I'm going to those targets in person, usually at different times of the day, and I'm gonna drop off a card and I'm gonna ask very specific questions, okay? The first question I'm gonna ask is, because I want you to remember this, the people that you're gonna be talking to don't expect you to be there and they don't want you there. So the first thing I'm asking is simple. Who do I speak with about janitorial services or who is the person I would speak to about janitorial decisions? And they're gonna, you're just there to collect information. Okay, as you collect information, you're going to be asking for things like, I can I get a business card? On that business card, does it have their direct phone number, et cetera? Does it, does it have an email? Because that's imperative. And you're gonna ask the gatekeeper, what's the best time of the day to reach them? And do I have their direct phone number? If you do, great. You might ask the gatekeeper, are you happy with the cleaning services? Because guess who's calling the janitor to complain? It's probably the person you're talking to. It's not the person making decisions because they delegate that type of stuff off. You get, no, they suck. They're terrible, whatever. You're going to walk out. You're going to make some notes on the back of the card and you're going to go to the next target and the next target and the next target. Then you go home and you're going to put these cards into three piles. The first pile is people you want to do business with. The second one is people that you might want to do business with. And the third is in the trash, because you don't need to call people that you don't want to work with. You identify those things based on size of buildings. It could be on opportunities, what people said, or the geographic area that you chose. Now that I've done that, the next day, and if you wait longer than 48 hours, you're going to lose. The next day is my recommendation. You're going to pick up the phone and you're going to call just as you told the gatekeeper you would, and you're going to ask for the person that they said you need to speak to. 90% of the time, you're not going to get anywhere with that. So you're going to be leaving a voicemail. Now you need a voicemail script, and that's going to be something along the lines of, this is why I'm calling, didn't get to reach you, I'm going to try you again um, tomorrow and the next day, whatever. Um, and then you call, because the thing that people do really poorly when it comes to sales, especially prospecting, which is a part of it, is they don't follow up very well. Email templates, sending good emails, sending good information, having good branded information, all of that stuff matters too. And here's the thing that most people in our business are not, just don't understand. Consistency, consistency, consistency. And you have to have the fortitude to be able to get no over and over again. You might go out and see 50 doors and get one appointment, you might go out and see 50 doors and get zero. You might see 500 and get 20. It just, there's really no rhyme or reason around it, at least initially. But as you start to practice, your success rate will go up. Okay. So after you get a, an appointment, 
then you go into what we'll do at another live stream, which is how do you deal with the prospect? Um, all right. As you build out um, your business and you become better and better at this, so much of it is going to be, um, you know, getting larger accounts is going to be, do you have the capacity to have the people and be able to demonstrate that to clients? Um, also, do you have the knowledge? Because if you don't ask the right questions, the people you're going to be talking to, if you're looking to get bigger business, they're going to know that right away. Um, if you're looking for bigger business, you better have the contacts, which would be in your, in our case, it would be referenceable accounts um, that give you credibility. If you don't have credibility, it doesn't matter. First time you sign the largest account in an area um, and they're referenceable, it's gold. So you need to really work on your trade your craft to be the best cleaning person you can be um, so that you can get to a point where you can take on large accounts. And I think the biggest thing is you have to have the courage to take the leap because I see a lot of people in the cleaning business um, that are like, I like the small jobs because if I lose one, it doesn't hurt so bad. Really, if you want to be successful in this business, you're going to have to take on large accounts because they're easier to staff. Um, and they're going to have higher profit margins than smaller accounts where you're having to drive from one place to the other. It's just the way that the world works. So, um, all right. That was a lot. I'm now I'm parched over here. I, I need something to drink. Yeah. Somebody's going to make a comment about being, about the word parched. I know I got you. Um, <clears throat> Damien. Thank you, Damien. Crown aid. Um, using an app. Uh, Lewis, you're losing an app. It looks like that counts, uh, the square footage carpet, et cetera. Yeah. I, you know, we, we use building inventories and so, you know, that's a, that's a start, but you really need to run your own calculations as well. Uh, Shatora, uh, what systems are in place to make a better flow on cleaning commercial buildings? Google, um, team cleaning, and you're going to find a lot of information about how you can use a system um, to be more efficient for cleaning. Um, and you really need to lean into it if you expect to not only be more efficient yourself, but to scale. Okay, for sure. Um, how do you get the first account with no references? Fake it till you make it, Job. I mean, <laughs> I'm telling you. I was 15 years old the first time I sold an account. I had I had no right to be in any type of commercial building talking to anybody. And, and I'll tell you, the first account I sold, um, they said yes because they felt sorry for me, not because I was actually good at what I was doing. Um, and I, I heard that much, much later in my life when I ran into the guy um, and when my son was in karate at his school. So, you know, these are things that, you would be surprised at how often people don't ask for references. You would be surprised. Um, and too often I see people just offer them, um, you know, willy nilly without really considering if they ask for them or not. I mean, credibility is brand. Credibility is you. People buy from people that are like them. People don't buy that from people they like. That's a very important thing to, to remember. They buy from people who are like them which means that you're going to have to spend a lot more time figuring out how to match and mirror conversations, right? Um, how to identify the type of personality somebody is and match that personality. That is way more important than having the biggest reference in the world. Now that changes when you are dealing with major, major, major medical clinics that have millions of square feet and they're going to spend millions of dollars a year. That, that's different, but you have to earn that. Um, and so when you're first starting out, Fake it till you make it, Job. Um, do you recommend getting certifications and which ones? Wait till Greg does a live stream. He'll tell you all about certifications. Personally, I mean, I'm a, I'm a janitor. I'm old school. You know, I, I would say that, yeah, there's a reason to have certain certifications. Um, uh, you know, SIMS is really good. Uh, CIMS is really good. But again, those are things that you would want if you're going into major high rise buildings. So if that's what you want, and that's what it is. Um, do we have a team cleaning guide? Well, we have training cards that are team cleaning centric. So uh, those will be available soon. But um, all right. 
I'm going to answer about one more question and then I am going to cut off because I promised we would only be on 30 minutes. Um, thank you, OctoClean, for re for saying about the training cards. That's going to be going live on Friday. They're they're awesome cards. So um, a lot a lot to learn. But so just uh, remember, I mean, it's you know, if you want to have more of these types of chats, which I don't know about you, but it, I thought it was kind of fun. Um, you know, if you want to have more of these kind of chats, then don't forget our membership is only five dollars a month. We're going to have a lot of um, really good content opportunities for you to ask questions, not just of me, even though I tend to be more, you know, sales brand vision centric. Um, you know, I know a lot about operations as well, but I'm going to leave the operations stuff to Greg, um, some of our marketing and branding things to Andrea, uh, but a lot of great information. And frankly, you know, it, it's a value at $5 a month. Um, as I told Andrea, the other day, you spend more than that on Starbucks in one day and their coffee sucks. So, um, and my, my guy Moses here knows Starbucks is not good, right, Moses? Okay, that's what I'm saying. Um, all right, who wins the Super Bowl this year? I, I don't even know because my Broncos aren't in this thing. So I, I would say, who's in, the, who's in there now? All right, I'm going with KC. I'm going with KC. Um, all right. So very good. Um, I, I'm just going to close everything out here. I appreciate all of your, your time, um, and giving us the opportunity to share something around this. And I look forward to seeing all of you and many more on our live stream to come. Um, thank you. We'll see you later.